Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree is the 26th episode of the second series of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, first broadcast on the 17th of December 1986. As with the show's previous season, its producer, Britt Allcroft, felt the season finale should be a Christmas-themed episode. The snag being, the Reverend Wilbert Audrey had only ever written one story in his Railway series where the events took place during the festive season. As Wilbert's son Christopher had taken over writing the adventures of talking steam engines, he was commissioned to write a short story involving Christmas and the Island of Sodor's engines, which Britt Allcroft and David Mitten then adapted for their television series. This differs from the previous Thomas and Friends Christmas special, which was apparently written by Allcroft and Mitten first, then adapted into a book by Wilbert Audrey. Anyway, how faithful was the adaptation of Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree? Let's spot the differences. Two days before Christmas, Sir Topham Hatt tells Thomas the Tank Engine to go and collect a Christmas tree for a carol concert at Tidmouth Station. In the book, Thomas is told about the tree a week before it arrives on Sodor, having been delivered to the island by an unnamed diesel from the other railway. Will we be able to sing carols too? asked Thomas. We'll see, promised the fat controller. Thomas looks unhappy as he puffs away, suggesting he doesn't think he and the other engines will be allowed to join in the singing. His opened mouth smile in the episode implies he thinks they will be allowed to join in. Gordon and Henry are grumbling about Thomas being given such an important task. This comes across as very petty given the Fat Controller had told us that Henry will be in charge of Christmas cards and parcels. <laughs> and Gordon will be bringing the mayor of Sodor to the party. The mayor had never been mentioned before in the railway series, and wouldn't appear in the television series until 20 years later, in an episode of season 9. The big engine's grumbling in the shed was replaced in the adaptation by the sight of Thomas running into a snowdrift. There was worse to come! And then being buried by an avalanche. Thus in the book, the reason the tank engine doesn't return with the tree is as unknown to readers as it is to the engines. Until this point in the book, there was no snow at Tidmouth or Farquhar, while in the adaptation, the island was coated in white since the start. Donald suggests Thomas is late because he has run into a cow. Moo, said the cow. Henry pooh-poohs this notion, and suggests he turned onto a branch line, presumably meaning he's taken the wrong route back. These lines were not included into the episode, nor was this line in the book. Thomas left the works safely. This must mean that the Christmas tree was being kept at the works, which could also mean it is an artificial tree, perhaps made out of Henry's old shape. Donald and Douglas puff away to find Thomas, side by side, instead of back to back with a van full of workmen between their tenders. The twins already had snow plows attached in the episode, and in the book Gordon and Henry also volunteer to help, but the Fat Controller only wanted two engines for the search. At the junction, Donald and Douglas pass Duck, Toby and Percy, who are on their way to Tidmouth, as all trains are cancelled due to the heavy snowfall. Come back safely with Thomas and the missing Christmas tree, added Toby. As they approach Gordon's Hill, Donald says he wants to stop and rest, but Douglas refuses to do so until they find Thomas. These two moments were not added to the adaptation. What's that? hissed Douglas. I can hear something. Very faintly, there came a muffled cry. Help! Help! Probably the wind, insisted Donald. No, listen, said Douglas. Help, over here. Och, it's Thomas, they cried together. There is a directional goof in that the Scottish twins find Thomas, who was evidently travelling in the same direction they were, as Donald and Douglas are behind him, and the Christmas tree. 
But the tank engine was bringing the tree to Tidmouth, which is where the Scottish twins have just come from. In the book, Thomas's crew have already begun to dig him out of the snow. Then James and Edward arrive to pull Thomas and the tree out, and then all five engines puff back to Tidmouth. Edward and James do not join the rescue in the adaptation, and the uncoupled Christmas tree and Thomas are pulled out of the snow by Mr. Douglas. Sir Topham Hatt invites them all to the Christmas party, and so the engines all gather outside the station. One, two, three. So here it is, Merry Christmas. In the book, the engines are already inside the station, and so they are invited to stay. Daisy the diesel railcar does not appear in either source, while Bertie, Terence, Annie, Clarabelle, and Devious Diesel appear in the adaptation, not the illustrations. As with the TV version of Thomas's Christmas Party, everyone is wearing Santa hats, besides Sir Topham Hat. But the engines are undecorated in the illustrations. Instead of being behind Thomas on a side track leading to a turntable, in the book James is right at the front and embarrasses himself by wishing with excitement, a possible reference to the time he showered the fat controller with steam. Kindly remember that this is a special occasion. Be on your best behavior, and I want no, uh, wishing, please. Suddenly there was a strange whirring sound. Percy and Toby smiled. They knew who it was. Harold the helicopter arrives with Father Christmas, who gives the children presents, thanks James for helping to rescue Thomas, even though Donald and Douglas worked harder by clearing the snow from the tracks, and ties a few balloons to Thomas and Percy's buffer beams. The last line of the book is practically the same used in the episode. The main difference is one is said at the beginning of the party, and the other is said later that night after the party has ended. It's no fun getting stuck in the snow, whispered Thomas to Percy, but it was worth it for this party. Happy Christmas, Percy. Happy Christmas, everyone. To everybody have a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And don't only be friendly at Christmas, be friendly all through the year.